Welcome, everybody, to the Off the Wall Hockey Show. It's a hockey show for hockey fans, part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. We are on episode 61, and we've got a whole new week of NHL action to talk about. A lot of good stuff going on here. We've got major milestones being hit by players, milestones yeah. being hit by teams. Yeah. Uh, the into the final month now of the regular season, as we are now into April, getting closer and closer to playoff time. There is a lot of good stuff going on in the world of the NHL. So, as always, joined here by Steele as my co-host. Steele, welcome back. Thanks for being here and uh, ready to talk some more hockey as we get ready into uh, the final month of the year now. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it it's like you wait all year for this point in time where things start to get heating up. And let me tell you something, folks. John from Off the Wall Hockey is heating up big time. Man, he has got some awesome streamed games the last three weeks. Every single game has been on point. Listen, if you guys ain't following him, then we all need to have a little talk. Because <laughs> seriously, John is the GOAT, and you need to be checking out Off the Wall Hockey for all of his streaming games and all of his great shows and content, for sure, for sure. I am so thankful and grateful to be here. Thank you, John, for all you do for the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Let's get into our top stories, my friend. All right, I am ready to go. And to kick things off here, we have some major numbers hit by some players. And there's still a month of the year left. Which is scary. And Connor McDavid hit 100 points the other night. He became the first player this year to reach the 100-point mark. The Edmonton Oilers are playing a lot better under Jay Woodcroft than they were when Dave Tippett was Imagine that. fired. Um, <laughs> and Edmonton's kind of gotten it together here. And yeah. They've been playing well, and McDavid is obviously driving it offensively. And 100 points for him. And then last night, Austin Matthews hit the 50-goal mark. First player in the NHL to hit 50 goals this year. I think he goes over 60 this season. Um, Maybe. But... 100 points for McDavid, 50 goals for Matthews. They lead the league in each of their respective categories. And those are some major marks to hit with so much time left in the season. Especially with what you just said there, that last sentence, with so much time left in the season still. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to tell you about another player who's not that far behind. Okay, and yep. we're going to talk about him a little later, and that's Johnny Goudreau. Yeah. Who's at 91? He's going to have his first 100-point season this year. Uh, okay, and there's a couple other ones floating around there in Colorado yep. that are going to be close to that, too. So uh, it's impressive to see the amount of offensive production. Mm -hmm. I am going to say this, though, as a caveat. I think that the Austin Matthews getting to 50 goals is a little bit more impressive. And I'll tell you why. Because I think Austin Matthews has finally, like it finally clicked in there a little bit for him in the last two, three years. Hey, I got to play defense. Oh, his defensive game has been unreal. Okay, so like I said, in the last two or three years, mm -hmm. it's the light bulb has gone off for him, right? Because yep. now he is a complete game. It's like when we watched Ovechkin, right? When when he had when that light bulb went off for him too, and they said, "Hey, Ovi, uh, you gotta play defense <laughs> yeah, in order to win a Stanley Cup." Barry Trotz actually got him to back check. Yeah, uh, and what happened? He back checked, and they won a Stanley Cup. Yep. What? I mean, hey, man, you know, it's not rocket science here, folks. That's why, I, look, Connor McDavid, there's never, he's going to be a perennial guy that's going to get to that unless he's hurt. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He's a 100 point guy every year. Uh, uh, yeah, unless he's hurt or unless, you know, Edmonton suddenly, you know, loses 60% of their players to injury or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Unless the bottom falls, whatever. But even still, I, I still think he'll be close to 100 even either way. It doesn't matter because he's all there, all they are, him and Dreisaitl. Mm -hmm. That's why I think that Austin Matthews getting 
the 50 goal mark is a little bit more impressive because he's missed time. Yep. He's, you know, had some suspensions and he's missed a little time, you know, a couple little things here's and there's. But he's played a solid bloody season. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, all right. You know, there's another uh, player that's hit another mark, too. And I kind of yeah. went with the same theme with my number one top story. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, Huberto setting the record with 71 assists. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, he he does not get the national attention that guys like McDavid and Matthews and, you know, McKinnon and Ovechkin and these other you star know. players do. But oh Jonathan gosh. Huberto's production is absolutely unbelievable. And uh, he's certainly taking advantage of having such a stacked offensive roster this year. All the guy does is set guys up for goal after goal after goal. I mean, gosh. And then, you know, it, it's like watching a, a team clinic. Mm-hmm. Like when you watch Colorado, when you watch Calgary, when you watch um, Carolina, when you watch, um, you know, uh, Florida, when they get on the power play, it's like a clinic. You know, it's pass, pass, shoot, pass, pass, shoot, score. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, there's not a lot of stuff going on there. It's guys getting open, guys banging bodies, standing in front, shooting the puck, scoring the goals. Yep. <laughs> hey, what? All of those teams, all those top teams, all play like that. Even when they're not on the power play, even five on five, mm -hmm. it's still. I mean, some of the setup plays and some of the sweet passes. I mean, good gravy! I, the skill level. I mean, we're talking about the Hubertos, the McDavid's, the Matthews of the of the league here, yep. right? I mean, this this is cream of the crop here, folks. Oh, absolutely. So to hit 71 assists at this stage as well, another early mark, you know, it. I believe it's a team record. I don't know if it's an NHL record, but I know it's a team record. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a franchise record for the Florida Panthers. Right. Uh, isn't, it, isn't it amazing how far offenses come over the last, you know, like five to eight years? Like, 2015, Jamie Benn has 87 points, and it leads the NHL. Wow. 87, nobody even got to 90 in 2015. Wow. And now here we are in 2022, and we've got Jonathan Huberto with 71 assists. <laughs> Not even David just David with 100 points. 71 assists. we got Connor McDavid with 100 points. we got Matthews with 50 goals. Oh, my uh, We're going to have multiple players go over 100 points this year. Like, it's going to be probably the biggest crop of 100-point scores that we've seen in quite a while. And here's the other scary part, too. There's a, quite a group of players that have scored 30 goals. Yeah. I mean, you know, look, I remember that when the NHL was paying guys that score 20 goals and have 50 assists or 60 assists, they were paying them guys seven, eight million dollars a year a couple years ago. Yep. You know, I'm so also you have to take into account, too, that every year since then, the goalie equipment has gotten smaller. Mm -hmm. Okay by centimeters but it still has gotten smaller okay they've changed the blue paint area they've changed the trapezoid area you know they they've done things rules and regulation wise to try to help boost the scoring as well too oh big time and it's worked because scoring <laughs> continues to go up every year it ticks up a little bit and <laughs> It's I, I love it. I love seeing uh, players reach these numbers and yeah. all this offense and all of these goals. I think it makes it a lot more fun. It does because, you know, look, who wants to watch a game that's 2-1? Right? Now, Unless it's like a goaltending display. Right. A lot of time those games aren't the most exciting. Unless the goalies are just like standing on their heads. And there's like 50 shots to 46 shots. Yeah. Oh, okay. The, uh, uh, see, you're taking words out. See, John, man, we're just so into you're just taking words right out of my mouth. But that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, un unless the goaltenders are standing on their heads. Yeah. Do you know? 
you have teams now, the average number of goals per game for the top offensive teams this year is a staggering number that's over 3.65 per game. Yeah, no, that's a big thing is that, like, just overall, like, the goals per game numbers this year are massive. I mean, Florida's over four. I know! Uh, I could not tell you the last time a team's finished a season scoring four-plus goals per game. It's been a long time. Um, You know, Colorado, Toronto over 3.7. Minnesota's over 3.6. St. Louis is over 3.5. I think the big thing, though, is that there are... 18 teams scoring three or more goals per game. It used to be, like, even just a few years ago, if you were scoring three goals a game, that was easily top ten in the league. Yeah. And now you have 18 teams scoring over three goals per game. The talent is now starting to perforate out now throughout the entire rest of the league. Mm -hmm. where And you're starting to get it from more places now, too. You know, where you can only get back in the day, you you know, there was really only Canadian players and European players. Well, now American players are stepping in and not only are American players stepping in, but European players are coming to the colleges and the universities in the United States. Mm-hmm. Right. And playing for those teams, because <clears throat> when you look at all the, the progression of the United States in hockey. Yep. Just in the last 10 years alone. I mean, has been phenomenal. Not just for men's, but women's too. And college hockey is sending a lot more players to the NHL than they ever have before. And teams are now starting to go, ooh, hey, that, that uh, Michigan team's got some nice players on there. Oh, yeah. that, that, that uh, Minnesota team's got some nice players on I mean, teams are starting to notice. They're yep. starting to draft these players now higher and higher and higher. And they're starting to pan out now more. And they're starting to make the league now more. And they're starting to infiltrate into the league more. And, and being productive, being good players, being star players, being... You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I'm excited with uh with the growth uh that's one of my other top stories (laughs) so just to lead into that but so uh john how about your second uh top story yeah players aren't the only ones hitting major uh, marks here because we have teams doing it as well the colorado avalanche become the first team to hit 100 points on the season now they certainly won't be the last with this much time still remaining in the year um i think there's a long list of teams that are going to be following them up to hit 100 carolina's at 98 right now florida's at 98 right now um toronto's over 90 pittsburgh and new york are over Over 90 90. yeah we've got a lot of teams getting close but Mm -hmm. colorado is the first one 48 14 and 6 for the avalanche and uh (laughs) This team just continues to roll. Like it doesn't matter what gets thrown at them. This no. team continues to roll. And it doesn't matter who gets injured, who sits out. Yep. It doesn't matter. It just keeps on blowing in. And they just keep rolling and Let me tell you a little something about a certain goaltender out there in Colorado named of Darcy Gumper. And let me tell you some guys. This guy has been playing very well. Oh yeah. Look, when they put Grubauer up and he was drafted by Seattle, I was like, oh, man. And then they went and got Darcy Kemper, and I was like, all right, he's a pretty good goaltender. Uh, He was playing on a really bad team there in Arizona. And and, and, all right, you know, and but, oh, my. Look, it's amazing what happens when you have an offense in front of you. It's amazing what happens when you have a – shut down defense in front of you. Yep. I mean, nobody gets through in Colorado. I mean, you're lucky if you can get a pass past the blue line on them. <laughs> you know, I mean, jeez. So, uh, And I think one of the biggest things for Darcy Kemper is he stayed healthy this year, which has almost never happened. He's had exactly. so many injury issues throughout his career. 
that finally a, a full season where he stayed healthy and look at the level that he can play at when he's actually 100%. And for the Avalanche, they've got to hope that he can go through the playoffs without any injury issues because he's a huge he's a huge reason why this team is as good as they are. He's been outstanding this year, and he's gotten better and better as the year's gone along. So they need him in the postseason. If he gets hurt, that could be a big problem for Colorado. I agree. I agree. He, they, they need that health to continue, and – Obviously, the Avalanche, one of the favorites for the Cup this year. I mean, with good reason, Kemper uh, has stepped in and had a tremendous year in goal. Exactly, exactly. And even though they've been missing Landeskog, and even though they've missed you know players for different points in time in the season, mm-hmm. and boy, did they make a bunch of moves in the uh, trade deadline too. Yeah. You know, where they, they got some of the they, – they, they – were able to trade away some assets to bring in some assets. Yeah, they made they really filled out their depth, which has always kind of been. You know, we've known Colorado's had the talent for the last like three years now. Yeah, um, they've always had the high end talent. It was just you know, could they find the right depth group that could actually support that top end talent and get them further in the playoffs and they added cogliano they added lekin and they added manson to the back end man like now yeah. that this seems like a real full roster that's really filled out this colorado team is far and away a better team than what they've been the last two seasons I think yeah, yes because I think their bottom six off up uh, forward group is better. And I think Manson is a massive addition to that blue line. And with Darcy Kemper playing as well as he's been playing, yep. I think he's outshined anything Grubauer has ever has has done at all there in Colorado. Boy, doesn't it look like Grubauer was kind of made to look good by how good they were defensively last year? By the way, that he's played in Seattle this year. <sighs> Go figure. <laughs> it, it really seems like he got carried by that team just not giving up a lot of shots against and being a very tight defensive team last season. Because um, Grubauer has not looked good in Seattle with obviously a much lesser lineup in front of them. Exactly. Exactly. So that that's the other thing, though, too. You know what I mean? And that's why I think that as long as Grubauer – or long as uh, – I'm sorry, Grubauer. Yeah, as long as Kemper – Yep. Stays healthy, and they're going to get Landeskog back here in a, another couple weeks, just in time for playoffs. Yep. Right, and they've already reached a hundred points. So I mean, they could just take off this month, <laughs> literally. Right, they could bring up the the AHL guys and their college kids and play all their kids for the next month. And still be in the playoffs. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 100 points, 100%. They're already, I mean, they're not mathematically clinched, I guess, yet. But right. They're, they're <laughs> That's a, a little they, early for that. They're a playoff but... team. I mean, 102 points is absolutely going to get you in the playoffs. I think the cutoff line in the West is probably be going to be between 94 and 96. Yeah, somewhere, probably about that. Somewhere mm-hmm. around there is going to be the cutoff line in the West. So yeah. Colorado absolutely, I mean, they could literally not play their last 14 games and i still think they're in the playoffs <laughs> you know what even if they even if they gosh man even if they split their next 14 games yep right that still only has them with 21 losses on the season <laughs> yeah and another seven wins another seven wins would give them 14 more points they'd still finish the year with 116 points if they went yeah. if they went 500 the rest of the season they'd have 116 points they wouldn't get to I don't we're not going to see the magical 60 this year I don't think they're going to win no. 12 out of 14 I also think they're going to start resting guys yeah I think so too yeah they, they would they, they would be dumb not to at this point yeah do you know what I They'd mean? They'd win the division with 116. If they go 7-7 seven and seven these last 14 games, they still win the division and win the Western Conference with 116 <laughs> points. Like I said, if they go 500 the next 14 games, then yeah. all right. <laughs> it's still that's only all, getting... that's literally all they need to do. Really? You know what I mean? So, all right. Okay. So, my um, second top story yep. for me um, is uh, we were talking about the health of a certain goaltender. Yep. Uh, we've had some significant injuries to 
a player and a goaltender, actually. Yeah. Um, Kokin and Yemi uh, is out for at least two weeks for Carolina. Yeah. And that's that's going to hurt, but not necessarily. Carolina is deep enough where I think they're going to be okay, but obviously yeah. you, they don't want him out of the out. lineup. Yeah. You know, he's a guy that they want playing and, and, you know, being a contributor in that lineup, but they're deep enough to where I think they can handle him being out. He's been a really good player for them this year. This was a really good move to bring him in here and play in Carolina. Um, he has fit in quite nicely. Um, it, his game has improved. His offense has improved. His 200-foot game has improved. Mm-hmm. He's maturing. Yep. Right? It's th- See, that's, that's why I think that, that maybe he was more of a catalyst to getting out of Montreal than Montreal sending him off. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because, well, he's got 11 goals this year. He's had a very nice season. Okay. So, I mean, you know, I mean, he's not like – this huge offensive juggernaut. No, I think he's he's kind of embraced the fact that he's a checking forward. Exactly. He's a defensive checking forward. He's exactly. got 26 points in 63 games. He's plus five on the year. Like he's kind of he's embraced okay. the fact that he's kind of a, a shut down defensive guy in a in a third line type role. And they paid him to be that guy. Right, based off of his contract, don't you think they kind of paid him to be that guy? Oh well, yeah, I mean they gave him a huge amount of money this year to get him out of Montreal with that offer sheet. But the long-term extension, where they took the cap hit down a little bit, yeah, uh, I think they realized that he's kind of going to be that he, that middle six guy, third liner. Maybe if he progresses more offensively, you could see him in a second line role in the future. I think he could be a lot like Jordan Stahl. I think so too. I think he. I think he's almost being molded to be the next Jordan <laughs> Stahl. Is I mean Jordan Stahl's getting up there in age now. Yeah. And probably you know isn't going to be around. Around forever. much longer, right? Yeah, I think they're kind of molding Coke Kaniemi to be the next Jordan Stahl. Which I would not have a problem with that. Would not have a problem with that at all. No, I, I mean get- that's a. I mean, that that's a kind of guy that you need, and especially that good, you know shut down defensive forward that you kind of use to um that you that you use to play against the other team's top offensive players and try and limit their their goals against and Carolina overall is just such a defensive team. The oh, other man. big thing is that Kokaniemi is over 51% in the faceoff dot. This exactly. Year, which is for the first time ever that he's been over 50% in the faceoff dot. His 3 years in Montreal he was 45%, 42% and then 47%. Okay. Now he's up to 51. That also helps out big time as far as being a defensive well, center well yeah you take it also you take you can take those draws in the in yep. in, in 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 your zone or in yep. your end you know and and be able to move the puck out and get the puck moving forward absolutely you he, know what i mean he is setting up to be very jordan stall like i i agree and uh but this little injury, I think, is going to, you know, it's two weeks. They're saying he's going to be out. So As eh. long as he's back for the playoffs, that's the important thing. Carolina is another team that is already, you know, obviously a playoff team. So yeah. as long as he's back for the postseason, that's the important part. And quite honestly, um, Carolina is also almost in that same boat, too, where they could pretty much <laughs> sit for the next 15 games and – or 16 games or whatever. And, hmm. All right, whatever. Yeah, they got 14 left as well. Yeah. Uh, they got 98 points. So, again, if they went if they went 7-7 seven and seven the rest of the way, they're still at 112 points on the year. Um, probably <laughs> still winning that division. So That's what I mean. Uh, yeah, Ca- Carolina is in very good shape right, right now. They're probably one of – that them and maybe Florida, I would say – are about the only three teams that could just potentially just take off the next month. Yeah, Florida's at 98 points as well. They have 15 games left, and right. the same thing. You know, if they they just didn't play those 15 games, <laughs> they'd still be at 98 points, and I think that we'll still that, would win the. Well, I, I don't. I don't. Maybe think not the division it, for Florida, but I think they'd still be in a playoff spot. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Right. 
Okay. So the other injury that we have to talk about, too, is Morozik. Yeah. That's I a, watched this happen. It did not look good. Okay, so I did not get to see this happen. Okay. So I had to... I mean, like, I, I didn't watch it happen live. I yeah. Had to, yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, why don't you tell me about... <laughs> What was your reaction when you saw that? Uh, well, he was putting no weight on his right leg as he skated off the ice. So when, when he literally won't even put the skate down on the ice, you know it's pretty bad. And came out like during the game that it was a groin injury. He's oh. had a lot of groin issues throughout okay. his career. So okay. um, yeah, it looked like a pretty bad groin pull. And uh, that's never good for a goalie. They do so much side to side, so much where their pads are stretched out. Uh, you get a groin issue for a goalie, and that can become a big problem. So that could be career-ending, even. Yeah, I mean, he, he. I think they said that he's he's out for at least the rest of the regular season. Oh so, man, this is this is not looking good for Morazic. They need Jack Campbell back asap. That's why. I, that's why I highlighted this as my my next or as my second top story because man, that's another big name goaltender now that's on the shelf. Yeah, and now they're relying on Eric Schalgren, the rookie, who just played his first NHL game, you know, this year, not that long ago, like a month ago. So Exactly. Um, you know, they need Jack Campbell back. Now Campbell's been practicing, I think he pretty much is, like yeah. he's about ready to return, which is yeah. perfect timing for the Maple Leafs. Whew. But man. now, you know, again, now you don't have Morazic, you've got Campbell and Schalgren as your duo now. How's that gonna go in the playoffs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't look like Morozik is going to be back anytime soon. Uh, I mean, maybe maybe in the playoffs, you know, depending on how it heals. But uh, a groin injury for a goalie is such a question mark. It is. If it's a uh -oh. bad groin injury, that could linger and linger and linger. Especially if it's not healed all the way. Yep. You know what I mean? Because basically what you're doing is you're tearing the muscle. Okay, and if that if that tear and that isn't healed all the way, then it's much weaker, so you're going to be susceptible to even more damage. Re-injuring it is a big issue with groins. Exactly. And the fact that he's a goalie. I mean, it's it's one thing if it happens, well, even with a player, just skating. Yeah, just skating, yeah. Skating but a goalie does tough, the splits and but, side to side. Oh, yeah. uh -uh. The stuff that goalies do nowadays in the net with all the side to side and splits and all of that, like, that, you can't have a bad groin. <laughs> you can't do it with one leg. <laughs> no. And do you notice how, like, when I first started watching hockey, the biggest thing that the goaltenders could do was stack the pads, right? Yep. You don't hear that anymore. No, that's that's a lost art. Nobody really stacks the pads anymore. Well, that's because players are smart enough now to go, oh, so that's all the higher you're going? Well, boop, I can go up a little higher. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, what? You, you see guys flipping pucks up over the goalies. You know, goalie goes down, and, and it's like, oh, gosh, I can't remember who I was watching. It was a shootout goal. Um, and I can't, I think it was, uh, Tampa Bay and I can't remember who it was, mm -hmm. but totally just sat there and went like this for the goaltender. The goaltender went down and he just went Boop, and just popped it up over his head up score wins. Yep. <laughs> I think that was the Winnipeg game, uh, with the, uh, overtime goal, mm -hmm. uh, the other night. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. All right, so your now third top story is yeah we have a re-signing, um, classic post deadline. You know they start to get their cap situation figured out, and boom, there they go. Uh, Alex Goligoski re-signed to the Minnesota Wild, two years, two million dollars per season. He has had a fantastic year with Minnesota this year. Um, a good veteran guy that's really helped him out on the back end. He came out from Arizona, and he had he had really had some issues. Um, you know, his last few years in Arizona, um, you know, offensive production had really dropped off. Uh, you know, he he was looking a little bit older. You know, this is a guy that you know has had a very long and very good NHL career, and. Uh, then he, he kind of gets a breath of fresh air, some new life with Minnesota this year. Two goals, 26 assists for 28 points in 58 games, plus 34. 
unbelievable year with him plus minus wise like he is playing well defensively he's obviously chipping in offensively on the ice for a lot of goals for and you know he's 36 years old now but he's almost kind of having a rebirth late in his career with the minnesota yeah. wild after being in arizona for so many years and uh this to me i think this is a great veteran guy to keep around it you know obviously he's, he's up there in age but he's played extremely well this year so I think it makes a lot of sense for the Wild to to keep him, and they're, they're trying to keep a lot of their roster intact as much as possible because they have a very, very good team. So why wouldn't you? I mean, when when you have uh, Krill the Thrill, I mean, yeah. come on now. Um, and Minnesota, boy, they made some moves in the trade yeah. deadline yep. um, to bolster their back end for sure yep. um, and bolster their front end so uh, I, I'll tell you what man I think Minnesota has definitely put themselves in the conversation absolutely I think if there's a dark horse team you know so to say that's maybe not getting a, a shot as being called like a favorite or, or high contender but one of those teams that could get sneaky in the playoffs minnesota i think is is absolutely a team that could go on a run i agree i think they have built themselves to where they can handle a, a team like vegas i mean last year that's who they faced in the first round and and although they you know they they punched vegas in the mouth and made them bleed a little bit vegas just kind of stepped all over them oh yeah, it went seven games. I mean, that was a good, but hard-fought series. It was a hard-fought game, but and they did punch Vegas in the mouth, but in the end, Vegas won. Yeah, and boy of the t tables turned this year. Now That's Vegas I mean. might not even be making the playoffs. Well, but, I mean, you can't really blame the amount of injuries. Oh, well, they've missed a massive amount of... Yeah. Man games, games. Of yeah. Injuries. So you can't, you can't. Yeah, that's something I don't, I don't count that as. I mean, that's just a bad luck season. As well, far I as also I'm think concerned. their goaltending without uh, Flurry has been a problem. I agree as well too, because Leighton is just, and he's been injured oft. Yeah, injured. he's been off and on injured. He's been, he hasn't been that great when he's been in. Right. Like, I trading Flurry was a mistake for them. I agree. I agree. But well, you know, hey, um, we're, we're, that's why we're sitting on this end. <laughs> well, <laughs> Minnesota right? is certainly the better team this year, and I think they've got a real shot to make a statement in the playoffs. Making it past the first round would be making a statement, I would think, wouldn't well, you? That's yeah. That's been an issue for the Minnesota Wild. They haven't right. really done that a lot throughout their franchise history. No. They've kind of gotten that reputation of being a team that's good in the regular season, but always loses early. Exactly. And I think this year, this could be the team that kind of shakes that a little bit. And, man, I mean, probably, you know, assuming things go the way you would expect in the first round, it'd be them versus Colorado in round two. Yeah. What a series that would be. Because I think Minnesota could really give Colorado a tough series. They're physically, they're physically dominant compared to Colorado. Um, you know, they've played the Avalanche tight in the games that they've played this year. I think they could give them a real tough second-round series. Which is why I, I said what I did about the comparison to them from last year yeah. to Vegas. Yep. Because they have built a team now where they can withstand that first round. Yeah. So if they were to be facing a team like Vegas, they could beat them, yep. I think, with what they have right now. Yeah. That's basically what I was getting at. So. Oh, Bye. yeah, absolutely. Good deal, but Alex uh, Goligoski re-signing for two years, uh, two million dollars. So that's a pretty good deal, man, for for them. That's a real team-friendly deal, and I'm sure he's probably real happy. He's, you know, um, playing and contributing, and and still um, having a nice career. It's still at the age of 36. So oh yeah, he seems very happy in Minnesota. So yeah. he, I don't think he was too worried about the money. I think it was just, I want to stay in Minnesota. Probably going to finish his career there, considering he'll be 38 when this contract ends. Right. Um, so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> nice Good signing for them. Addition. Yeah, nice signing for them. All right, sir. My final top story. Yes. Is the kids. <laughs> hey, the kids. All right. The NCAA semifinals yep. is at Boston. Garden. 
at TD at Garden. Game. Yes, yep. Frozen 4. Yeah, man. And I'm here to tell you, folks, we got a matchup of matchups for these the Friday game and the and the the Sunday game. Holy smokes. I'm sorry. The, is it Friday and Saturday? Thursday, Friday? Saturday, I think. Thursday, Saturday. Because the, the semifinal games are both on April 7th, which is Thursday night. Okay. And then I think Saturday is the national which championship game. Which is the ninth. Game. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking at um, we're looking at Michigan versus Denver mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. is the first game, and then the next game is Minnesota versus Minnesota State. Yep. And I'm here to tell you, folks, every single one of these teams is the number one seed in their respective conferences, divisions, whatever. Right. They are also all of some of the top teams all day in college. Yep. Okay. And Michigan has seven, let me just say it again, seven number one draft picks on their current roster right now. Yes. And when those guys all leave, they got four more guys coming in (laughs) next year. Yeah, they've got a lot of first-round picks on that Michigan (laughs) roster. They're certainly the favorite. Definitely the favorite, but. Bobby Brink playing for Denver. Yep. Leading the the, the entire league and s- scoring. Scoring. Yep. Right. Points. Everything. Right. So, just don't think that they're going to have enough for the juggernaut of Michigan. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a good game. It's really going to be a good game. Um, I also think that Minnesota State might be the the more complete team over Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we might – either way, we're going to have a representative of Minnesota. Yes. In the final. Yeah, it's all Midwest teams this year. <laughs> right? Okay. It's kind of been a down year for Hockey East and the East yeah. Coast teams. And it's been – it's all Midwest this year with Michigan, Minnesota, Minnesota State, and Denver. Yeah, for sure. So – but either way you slice it, it's either going to be Denver and or Michigan against – a Minnesota or a Minnesota State team, yep. and either way, it's like I said, I think the next three games are going to be super exciting. Um, as far as I know, they're going to be on ESPN. Is going to broadcast maybe um, ESPN U or ESPN Two ESPN or something like that. ESPN Two is what the article says. Okay, um, I read something too where what I think the final is going to be on ESPN U. Oh, I I don't know I I. I know it's going to be on ESPN. I know they're going to uh, show the game. So um, I will definitely be checking them out because there's a lot of great NHL talent that's going to be playing in these games. Yeah. And I mean, this is this is playoff hockey. I mean, if you enjoy playoffs, this is playoff hockey in this uh, in this frozen four, the final final four teams. And, you know, obviously the games are extremely exciting and very fun to watch. And there's a lot of NHL draft picks playing for these teams. And obviously Michigan's kind of been the super team all year long with all of these first round picks that they have. But, you know, it's hockey. It only takes one bounce and a team like that can get knocked off. You know, one puck off a skate into the net and the whole game changes. So exactly, um, it's going to be a lot of fun for sure. But uh, I would say... Michigan's probably the, the my pick and the favorite, but it's going to be a fun uh, fun few games for sure. I agree. I I agree. I, even even if uh, Minnesota State um, wins, mm-hmm. um, I I still think that Michigan would be able to. They just they just have too much. There's so talent. much talent. There's just so and they're playing so well. Mm-hmm. I mean, they put seven goals up on Quantapoc. Seven. I mean, it, it was tight there for a while. It was seven to four, mm-hmm. right? So it was tight there for a little while, but still, like, all right, uh, <laughs> they put up seven. <laughs> they had to dig deep a little bit, yeah. <laughs> right? They had to come out and play a third period. Okay, big deal. <laughs> Score three goals in the third period to 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 win the game seven to four. Okay, no problem. So yeah, I'm with you on that. Michigan, I think for sure is going to be uh, my pick as well too but i wanted to at least mention it because Mm -hmm. um it is a very it has grown 
um, over the last couple of years now. Yep. It is a much more important set of games now where um, professional teams now are paying much more closer attention to these games and a lot more of their draft picks now are playing for these colleges too. Mm-hmm. So And draft picks are coming out of these colleges. Yep, big yeah. time. So that's the thing too. That's that's because the draft is going to be you know in a couple months. So here we go. Yeah, <laughs> getting getting close now. Getting close for sure. So there you go, man. Those are our those are our top stories of the show. Here we go. So now it is time to move on to one of our favorite segments: top shelf. Our power rankings where we look at the best teams in the NHL. And this is based off of point percentage, so it's mathematical. Who are the top five teams in the league as of this week, as of Friday? And, uh, well, there's some changes on the list here. Uh, The top three three have been the top three for most of the year, but we've had some some switching around at four and five and some changes to talk about, so this ought to be fun. We always seem... To have that, you know, there always seems to be that switching around there in the yep. four or five because the top three have just been the top three and they've just stayed the top three pretty yep. much now. We've had the top three have changed, but they've all been the same three teams mm-hmm. for the most part. Yep. Okay. So now that we're doing the uh, we're doing the uh, percentages. Yep. Um, this makes it um, so much easier now, and there's no argument yeah. <laughs> as to who we feel is going to be the teams. Um, but top shelf power rankings, John, we got Tampa Bay here at number five. Back on the list. Back on the list yep. after being off for a little while. 42, 18, and 6. Yep. Okay, they had a bit of a bender there where they were not winning some games and such (laughs) yeah now they're just on a three game winning streak getting back to being the tampa bay lightning (laughs) okay right 42 18 and 6 at a point six eight two percent that puts them at number five um i don't think they're gonna win the division no but i I still think they're gonna be in the middle pack of seeds yeah, definitely. You know, and they're going to finish second or three, third. Three, four, or something, right? They're going to finish second or third in the Atlantic, I, bu- I believe. And yeah. I certainly wouldn't be excited to have to face the Lightning in the first round for whoever does. No. No. Because you're facing probably the best goaltender in the league, I would. I still put Vasilevsky as one of the best goaltenders in the league. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, not trying to take anything away from say, Shesterkin or, or anybody like that um, who potentially could win the MVP. But uh, I really like Vasilevsky even for – I think you still even have to put him in the Vesna conversation this year. I don't think he's going to win it, but you have to put him in the conversation, I think. And he is still, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best goaltenders on the planet. So and he's got the playoff resume. That you know, a lot of these other goalies don't. Vasilevsky's don't. got the got the playoff resume. He's got the Stanley Cups. And exactly. So, I I agree. I would not want to be playing Tampa Bay. Although I think there are going to be teams out there that can beat Tampa Bay. Oh yeah, they're beatable. I don't think Tampa is the you know like juggernaut top yeah. team the way that they have been the last couple of years. But yeah, I agree. I, I think they're beatable, but I also think they're going to be tough to beat. They're certainly not dropped off to the point where they're going to make it easy. So No, uh-uh. And they seem to be the kind of team that can kind of flip the switch when they need to as well, which, you know, you, you always hear people say, you know, like you want to be playing well going into the playoffs. You don't want to be, you know, kind of lackadaisical and, and not playing good hockey because you're not just going to be able to just throw it into playoff mode and, and just take off once the games really start to count. Tampa Bay, I think, kind of showed last year that they're they're one of the few teams that might be able to just flip that switch because they didn't play all that great in the regular season last year. They had some nope. stretches where they were particularly kind of disappointing, mm. and then it got to the playoff time. And it didn't matter. Click. They, they were just like, okay, playoffs, we're ready to go. Time to go win another cup. <laughs> Click. 
the switch went off. Yeah, Click. I feel like they get bored with the regular season, and yeah. they can just flip that switch when the playoffs come around. Yeah, you know, that's what Perlo likes to call it, too. He, he says the same thing about Tampa Bay. Yeah. He, he says that they get bored with the regular season. But I'll tell you what, I've seen it happen during games. Mm-hmm. I've seen them flip the switch during games. Yep. They're like, okay, we're winning this game. <laughs> I, when you have a team like that, that makes you dangerous. Yes, very okay? dangerous. Very dangerous because at any given point in time, you can just be like, "All right, click. We're we're, we're, we're winning done this now. Game. We're winning this game." Yeah. And they have the team now. They're lacking a little bit of the depth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that they've had in the past, but still, a strong team that can roll four lines has good defense. Plays really well on the power play. Plays really well five one five, and has one of the best goaltenders in the league. Yeah, I, w- I would not want to be facing Tampa Bay. Not going to be fun if you have to play them in the playoffs. That's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, John. Here we go, man. I can't believe we're going to say this. Team. Newcomer to the list. I can't believe we're going to say this team. The New York Rangers. Oh, number four. 44, 19, and 5, a .684 point percentage now for the New York Rangers. Th- this team, everyone Boom. everyone seems to be looking for reasons to discredit the Rangers and try and knock them out and take them down and say that there's a, like they're, they're going to lose in the first round. They don't have the experience. They're too young. This team just keeps on winning. They just keep on winning over and over and over again. They've picked up some huge wins over the Penguins, who's actually the team that they're going to face in all likelihood in the first round of the playoffs. Um, you know, you saw this those team two just... games they played, right? Those were the two games that I had picked for my games of the week last week. Yeah. They're, they're I mean, it's unbelievable. They, this team just finds ways to win. Um, obviously Shesterkin in goal has been incredible this year. He had a little bit of a tough patch. I think he had like four or five games where he was really struggling, but yeah. he's gotten back to being Igor Shesterkin. His goals <laughs> against is still 2.11. So even despite those bad games, his, his goals against are still 2.11. Jeez, um, all right. he's been awesome. And the Rangers hop up onto the list this week. They're they're looking really dangerous, and I think they're a team that if they can get by round one and build that confidence that they aren't too young and that they can win in the playoffs, if they get by round one, they are going to be a really sneaky, dangerous team that could potentially go on a run. Do you know, it's funny that you say that. Uh, I wasn't expecting New York to be this good. Oh, I a hundred percent. I didn't. I was not expecting them to be this good. Absolutely I mean, I was not. expecting them to be like they finished uh, fourth, no fifth, in the division last year. They missed out by just like a couple of points. Yep. Right, and they were coming on strong there at the end. Yep. Okay, and I thought, all right, now we're going to play a full season. Now we'll see how New York is going to do, and I think they could they could be fighting for. You know, that fourth spot. Yep. That's kind of where I put New York when, when the season started. Mm-hmm. Because of the moves they made and and the, 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 the folks that they've added to the team since then. You know yep. what I mean? So I thought, all right, you know, they'll be fighting for that fourth spot. Holy smokes. Yeah, they're fighting for the fourth spot in the league. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whew. Man, they do, man. They just find ways to win. They continue to win. They just work you. Yep. Okay? They just play a solid, steady game. Yep. Okay? There's nothing amazing about it. There's nothing flashy about it. It's almost like watching Carolina. Yeah. They're, they're not a flashy team. Um, you know? I mean, Panera they- and Zabanajad, uh, but they're not a flashy team. Nope. Fox is a, a lunch pail guy. You know what I mean? So uh, this team doesn't have those, you know, McDavid's. Yeah. Right? No, I mean, obviously, like, Panarin is their superstar. Zabinijad's great up front. But they're not certainly not McDavid level. That's what I mean. Like, Adam just... Fox on the back end is yeah. honestly, like, 
you know, one of their most offensive guys, and he's a defenseman. That's what I mean, right? But Kreider so, has had an unbelievable oh, year oh with my gosh. 46 goals. He's, I mean, blowing away his previous career high. Did you, wait, you just said Chris Kreider with 46 goals. Yeah, he, he's going to score on. 50 this year. <laughs> and I think more than half of them have come on the power play. Yeah. He's an absolute yeah. beast in front of the net. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. This team just plays a good, solid hockey game. Yep. They play good defensively. They play good on the power play. They play good on the penalty kill, and they play good five on five. And they're tough. Like they're they're not they going to shy away from that playoff style tough hockey. And that's I think one of the biggest differences is you know obviously with everything that happened between them and the Capitals last year and. It wasn't just that. It was other teams as well that kind of physically was able to take advantage of the Rangers not being that tough last season. I agree. They made a very conscious effort this offseason to change that. Yeah. And and now it's that working. they're one of the more physical teams and they're the ones doing the bashing rather than getting back. <laughs> exactly. And that's going to pay huge dividends come playoff time. See, when you get that level of hockey see because i i'm with you on that john there's two different kinds of hockey yes there is regular season hockey yep and then there's playoff hockey yes right and it just seems like playoff hockey is like 10 steps above where regular season hockey is yeah there, it's not it's it's almost like it's not even the same game sometimes. right like you can you can have regular season games where you're lucky if there's 20 hits in the game. You go to a playoff game and there's 40 hits in the first period. In the first period. <laughs> and and you'll have over 100 hits in the game between the two teams. You you don't see that in the regular season, but playoffs no. completely goes to a whole other level. I mean, last year when we were talking about playoffs, Right, and some of the Florida and Carolina games had over a hundred hits mm -hmm. in the game itself. Yeah, between both teams, you're like, oh, well, all right. <laughs> yeah, you've got both teams, you know, with with fifty hits in the game. You just don't see that level of physicality in the regular season. No, you don't. And it's there's way more on the line now when it gets to playoffs, yep. right? And so that. That one hit that you lay might be that that guy doesn't get up. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. it's sad to say that, but that's kind of where that comes from. Because what? Well, let's face it: if you ring somebody's bell, they're not going to be out there skating around for a couple of shifts, right? Yeah, and just the overall physical toll over the course of a seven-game series that you can that you can impact on the other team. You can have it by game seven. The other team's defensemen don't even want to go into the corners because they know they're going to get sent through the glass. And that will that can that will change the series that will force turnovers that will give you more offensive zone time that will give you more puck possession. And you can change a series with physicality. And we see it every year in the playoffs. That's why just because a team is great in the regular season, it doesn't always equate to being great in the playoffs because you have to be able to play that playoff style of hockey. And some of the more finesse teams in the regular season, sure, they'll win 50 games in the regular season and finish top three in the standings and whatever. But if, they, if you can't change your style to be able to play that physicality in the playoffs, then you're not going to go anywhere in the playoffs. Exactly. And that's, I mean... That's the, the key factor is right there. You know, playing a finesse style game is all fine and great for the regular season, but it's not going to win you championships. Exactly. Okay. And when teams finally realize that and they finally figure that out, yep. do you know what I mean? And then they go, oh, yeah. I, I mean, like, I, that's what I think has happened with Toronto. Mm -hmm. Right. I think Toronto is starting to figure it out. Hey, we need to get guys in there that can play more of that playoff style hockey. That's why Wayne Simmons is in the lineup. That's why they've been playing Kyle Clifford in the lineup. That's why Michael Bunting was brought in. And those are just forwards. And then on the back end, you know, a guy like Jake Muzzin that they brought in, uh, unfortunately has had a lot of concussion issues this year, but Muzzin yeah, but... is overall a physical defenseman. 
Um, they brought in Mark Giordano, who's obviously played a lot of playoff games and has that experience. Uh, exactly. They brought in Ilya Labushkin, who's not a small guy. He's, you know, can get physical if you need him to. Like, Toronto is figuring out that you have to have those kinds of players to play in the playoffs. Do you know who hasn't figured it out? Edmonton. Yeah, Edmonton. I, oh, boy, Edmonton. They... That team is not as tough as I thought. I mean, they've got Darnell Nurse, but he hasn't played all that tough this year. Zach Cassian's like their only forward that I would say is really tough. I mean, they like brought in Evander Kane now, but so I guess he helps a little bit. But eh, that team, that team doesn't have that team's not as physical, I think, as they need to be to win in the Western Conference. I watched I mean, them against Calgary, the Battle yeah, of Alberta, the last yeah. uh, Battle of Alberta. Uh, last weekend, they got worked by the Flames in that game. And if it wasn't for yeah. the Edmonton power plays, that game would have been like nine to two, nine to one, <laughs> nine to two. If it wasn't for Edmonton's power play scoring a bunch of goals, exactly. And, and you they can't... got worked physically. And when when you get to playoffs, guess what goes away? Power plays, because yeah. the whistle gets swallowed. The whistle, you know, it's. If it's getting called in the playoffs, it's got to be a blatant, clear penalty. Because other than that, they yeah. put the whistles away for the most part. Yep, they swallow the whistles in the playoffs. So if you have a really great power play, that's great. But if if it's on the shelf, yeah, then you're, we're good you're not going to gonna be getting six power plays most likely in a playoff game. Most likely, you you'll be lucky if you get one or two. You're going to probably be getting two, maybe three power plays. And like I it. said, you know what I mean. So I, I know I'm with you on that, but surprising to see New York fourth on the list for the entire league at 44 wins. Yeah. My gosh, was not expecting them to be quite this good, but was expecting them to be much improved over last year. But man, they've really improved, and I agree. You really don't want to. I I would really like to see that that series new york and pittsburgh oh yeah that, so that one's could, almost locked in like we would just so i can see new york win that change. just so i can see new york win that that would be awesome i mean i right. i would love i want that series. i think they that's can. one that i think is pretty well locked in that we're for sure going to see um, i think i think that can happen i yeah. think new york can beat pittsburgh even with a healthy uh, Malkin, a healthy Crosby, uh, uh, a, a healthy uh, Jari, their 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 full complement of defense. Pittsburgh's playoff, you know what I mean? recent playoff history is definitely a little concerning. Yeah, For, out mm-hmm. in the first round in 2019, out in the qualifying round to a team that barely even <laughs> made it there in <laughs> Montreal in 2020, and then out in the first the round to the Islanders again last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that doesn't bode well for the experience with your goaltenders either. Yeah. When you lose, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, you have playoff experience, but it's losing playoff experience. Yeah. You know, so, but uh, really uh, impressed with New York. So that brings us to the number three team. And now the top three teams, come on. Like, like this isn't even really. <laughs> yeah. We've, All right. We've, it's, they've been the top three for almost the entire year. Since the beginning of the season, almost like Toronto came out of the gates and they were really good, and Anaheim came out of the gates, they were really good. They were on the list at the beginning of the year, but pretty much, I would say ninety percent of the season, Carolina number three has been on the list in some way, oh, shape, yeah. form, or another Absolutely. at forty-five, fifteen, and eight at point seven two one percent. They have stayed at a at least. 700% winning percentage yep. the entire season. Yes. They have not dropped below 0.714 the entire season. Yeah. I think uh I think that these top 3 teams have kind of separated themselves from everyone else. I agree. Like they've been the top 3 teams all year. All year. And Carolina just, man, I'll tell you what, they didn't really do much at the trade deadline. They 
quietly did a couple things, but I don't think they needed to. They didn't need to, right? They they signed uh, Koken and Yemi to his extension. That may became official, and I think they added a uh, they brought a in def- Max Domi. Max Domi, yeah. Um, which, all right, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see how that works uh, down there in Carolina. I was a little shocked to see that, but Carolina just continues to roll. I mean, their their penalty kill is almost at 90% still, right? Wouldn't it be something if they could get it to 90% before the end of the season and finish the year with a penalty kill at 90% or wouldn't above? That, is that, wouldn't that be the first time that a team has ever finished at 90%? I would. I don't know off the top of my head, but I would have to imagine. I, have, I, I can't imagine. At least imagine be in the top was, five. Yeah. I, I right? can't imagine anybody else. Was, all right, I'm going to try and look this up now. Okay. <laughs> Our crack research staff, John, <laughs> is going to dive into that. But Yeah, Carolina- so uh, Go according ahead. to Google, best season-long penalty kill in NHL history was the 2005-2006 Minnesota Wild, 87.4% on the penalty kill. And Carolina's already better than that. Carolina's at, you know, 89.4% now. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, Carolina is very likely going to break the record for best penalty kill in NHL history, and they could be the first team if they can get it over ninety percent to finish with a penalty kill of ninety percent or higher. If they can get it there. Oh my gosh! I mean, they gutted their goaltending room and brought in a complete new set of players and. Didn't matter. Freddie Anderson leads the league in goals against average among starting goaltenders. Two point zero zero goals against. Hey, funny you mention that name. Hmm. Foreshadow. Yeah, we're gonna Could. be uh, <laughs> we're gonna be talking about him. So Anderson him. is second in the league in uh, save percentage among goalies that have played at least sixteen games. He's at. Yeah. Uh, 929 save percentage and a 2.00 goals against average, which is best in the league. You know, the Vezina Trophy winning goaltender from last year was Marc Andre Fleury. His goals against was 2.12. Mm-hmm. And that wasn't even the best in the league yep. at the time. So I think Vasilevsky was at 0.209 or something or 0.210 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's getting her done, man. That's stopping the bloody puck. Holy smokes. Absolutely. But Carolina is one of the best defensive teams. Yep. They are the best defensive team. Well, yeah. But they're not the best offensive team. But they don't need to be. I mean, they just shut you down. You can't score against them. What are you talking about? You keep the puck (laughs) out of the net the way that they do, and you don't have to score four goals a game. You can score three goals and win it three to one every night. Every night? I mean, look, let's face it. Carolina, now, some of the Carolina games have been a little bit out of control, six, seven goals, you know, in some of the games that they've played. But for the most part, they're not like uh, Florida where they're putting up, you know, seven goals every other night. You no, know what I mean? no, they're definitely kind of a polar opposite in just style compared to the Panthers. Yeah, so, hey, it's funny that you mentioned the Panthers. <laughs> they're number two. 46, 15, and 6 on the year. 731 point percentage for the Florida Panthers this year. And we just went from talking about the best defensive team in the league to Carolina to the best offensive team in the league in the Florida Panthers. And this team does nothing but score goals. You know, they they actually are... Hold on, I just want to say this real quick. They're still able to keep the puck out of the net, too. I yeah, mean, they're not the worst defensive team, 2. but... 2.85 goals against per game, which is mid, uh, still pretty good. 12th in the league, but... 12th. The big thing is they are scoring 4.06 goals for per game. Best in the NHL by quite a bit. <laughs> and, um, uh, again, I don't know off the top of my head the last time a team scored over four goals a game in the NHL, but I feel like it's been a while. And Florida has a chance to do that this year if they can continue the offense the way that they have. They could they could finish the year scoring over four goals a game. And okay. just unbelievable talent on this team. Up and down, left and right, sideways, 
Barkoff, Huberdeau, Duclair. You know what I mean? Uh, then they added Giroux. Yep. <laughs> All right. Jeez. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I've, I've watched a lot of Florida games this year on yep. purpose. Long before Giroux got there because I, I'm – Huberdeau is one of my favorite players. I yep. really like watching him play. Um, he plays the game right. He's really awesome skill-wise on the puck. Yep. Um, has great hands. But Florida, they play a tough game. They smash you. They don't just hit you. Like, they will double-team smash you. Oh, yeah. They're, they're a physical team, especially for such an offensive team. A oh lot of times, off- high-flying offensive teams, a lot, of, a lot of times get the reputation of being kind of run and gun and not being, you know, more the, more the finesse team and not being more the physical team. But Florida's got the lineup that can run and gun with you and then also smash you out of the building. <laughs> Last year, Florida had one of the highest hits in the number of games that they played in the playoffs. Yep. They were leading in the hit department. They had almost the same number of hits in the playoffs as teams did the entire season last year in the playoffs and they only made one round and they only made one round all right so what does that tell you uh they've gotten this team is better by far and away better i i would not want to play florida no in any round and i don't think they're going to win the president's trophy this year Mm -hmm. um so man i i really have to I would have to pencil them in right now as one of the teams to make it to the finals. Okay. I'm I'm penciling them in right now. It's not an April Fools joke. <laughs> I'm putting Florida in as one of the Stanley Cup finalists. I I mean they're certainly a contender. They're a top team for a reason and they've got a very real shot of doing that. I would love to see a conference final between Florida and Carolina. That's shaping up to be that way. Yeah. And that's going to be a shame because that's going to, I mean, you know, the, you, you want to see Carolina and Florida make it as far as possible. Oh. So, but to see that, okay, the Florida and Carolina game, I think that's going to be a shame because that's going to be a very low scoring game. I don't. I think Carolina will be able to limit the amount of goals that Florida scores, but I still think Florida is going to be able to take Carolina. Oh, well, yeah. I'm just. I love the dynamic of you know such polar opposites playing each other to see which style wins out. You know, do the, yeah. do the Panthers in their offense and scoring so many goals able to beat Carolina in their shutdown defense, or does Carolina be able to find a way to shut down the Panthers and? Yeah. And just the dynamic of the best defensive team versus the best offensive team and which one is going to win out. See, that it's would too be, bad that can't be the Stanley Cup. Yeah, that would be a fantastic <laughs> conference final. So that's what I mean. Though. It's that, it would be a shame because that wouldn't be the Stanley Cup. No, it would be then great you'd have to go the, on and play whoever comes out of the West. Yeah, right. So, But like I said, that would, uh, either way, I yep. still think Florida has – vastly improved their game. 100%. They they not only do they outscore you, but they <laughs> basically crush your bloody face into the glass along with all the pucks that they shoved into the net. <laughs> yeah. You know, like they smash you out. just watching these guys play, man. They do not care. They will double team to smash you. Yep. Yeah. So that's the kind of playoff hockey you need. That's why I think if Florida plays Tampa Bay, I think that's going to be a Florida situation now. I want that series really badly. I really want to see that rematch because they uh, they played last year. And that's what I mean. Tampa yep, yep. Won. I want to see them play again and see if Florida can take it this time. I agree with you. That's why I'm saying I want to see that uh, matchup uh, for sure. Yep. So um, I can't wait for that. So I think that's coming. I, I think we're we're heading to that. I hope so. I okay. Hope so. I hope so too. And that brings us to our number one team in the league. And 
Well, folks, Colorado has been up there at 0.75% with a 48-14-6 and six record. Like, this team is just far and away the most well-rounded hockey team I've ever seen play hockey. I mean, I've watched some good teams play in the past, Mm -hmm. but to watch the way this team plays today, they have the speed, they have the tenacity, they have the snarl, right? They will hit with the best of them. They can run and gun with the best of them. They have one of the most stacked teams as far as all-around talent. I mean, you could almost say that Colorado's top four lines, mm-hmm. I mean, if, if you took their bottom four, they would be some team's top lines. All You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So... Colorado has found the right combination of players. They've done the right things. Sackett has finally built a team that has the goaltending, as long as he can stay healthy, Yep. Uh, but is completely stacked all the way throughout their lineup. Yep. Okay. And at 48, 14, and 6, they have the best record in the league. Yep. And they have the most points in the league. And... They're on track to win the President's Trophy. Yes, they are. And they're, I mean, Colorado has been dominant this year. They're an incredibly good team. I think a lot hinges on Darcy Kemper in goal, particularly him staying healthy, which he has so far this year. If that can continue, then Colorado's, you know, got a really, really good shot. I also think they've really improved their depth. And that was kind of an issue for them the last few years. You know, their playoff history isn't exactly sparkling. Second nope. round seems to be a big issue for them. They they can win one, but then they get to that second round and they haven't been able to get over that hump. This might be the year, though, because this team is loaded from top to bottom. They've got a lot of improved depth, very good goaltending, very good decor. Um the Avs are the top team for a reason, and I think they're going to be very interesting to watch in the playoffs and see if they can continue dominating the way that they have in the regular season. I mean, have there's been teams like this in the past, right? When, yep. when the, the Gretzky teams, right, and the Mario Lemieux teams, some of them have been this dominant. The Islanders in the early eighties. The, the Islanders in the early eighties. I mean, yep. like the Gretzky teams, right? Didn't he play? He played for the Edmonton Oilers. Yes. Right, and then he played for um, the Rangers, and he played for the Kings. Kings. Right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Don't but forget yeah, the, his I, one stop in St. Louis either. <laughs> for yeah, ha- once, a few games. Stop. I do remember that. I do recall that. So the quick little stop there in St. Louis. <laughs> yeah, didn't last very long. No, but. Haven't and then the like the cup years for Crosby. Yep. You know where Pittsburgh was so dominant yep. over the whole rest of the. We, Colorado has finally put together the last three seasons. Colorado has been that perennial conversation. They're yep. they're in the they're in the mix. They're in the running. They're they're making it to the playoffs. Yep. But I agree with you, John. I think this year is is the year they get past that second round hump. And I think it's because of the goaltending and because of the depth that they've added that they're going to be able to make it over the hump. Yeah, yeah. This is a big playoffs for them because, you know, they're starting to get that reputation. You know, oh, yeah, they're, I mean, they're always, you know, great in the regular season, but they haven't been able to go deep. I haven't made it to a conference final. I haven't made it to a Stanley Cup final. Nope. They've got to break that reputation now, and this is a huge year for them in the postseason. Do you think that they could potentially be the first team to break the President's Trophy curse? Or not the first team, and there's, there was one back in, what, 2015? and uh, 2013, Chicago 2013 is the last and, team to win the right. President's Trophy and the Cup. But it's been a while, so... Yeah, they... we're almost kind of due for one. Right? Yeah. 
It's been you know? almost 10 years since the President's Trophy winner has won the Cup, so we're almost kind of due for one. <laughs> I This team is certainly good enough to, absolutely. Yeah. And you know what else, too? I think Florida even has a shot at the, at the President's Trophy as well, too. Mm-hmm. And, and I think Carolina does, too, to be quite honest with you. I think that the, the, the top three teams all have a shot at the President's Trophy. Yep. Because the records are all relatively similar. I mean, Colorado's 48 and 14, Florida is 46 and 15, yep. and Carolina is 45 and 15. Yeah. So, I mean, they're all within a couple of games. So, either way you slice it, I think one of those three teams is going to win the President's Trophy. And it's not going to matter, I don't think, this year mm-hmm. who wins the President's Trophy. Yeah. No, I, I, I mean,. Carolina and Florida at 98 points. Colorado's at 102. Four-point difference, depending on how the final month goes. Certainly not a foregone, excuse me, foregone conclusion yet. Um, but uh, I feel like Colorado probably wins it just because of how dominant yeah. they've been. Yeah, I agree. But I'm saying that that Florida and Carolina have a shot. Yeah, they're still in. Con- they're still within reach of it. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, they have a shot. Beyond that, I think it's it's definitely going to be one of those top three teams. Because beyond that, you have a you have a little bit of a drop off before you get to uh, before you get to the Rangers at 93 points. So exactly, exactly. There, so there's that's... definitely a separation there between those top three teams and then everybody else. Exactly, exactly. So. Well, there you have it, folks. Colorado, Florida, Carolina, New York Rangers, Tampa Bay Lightning are our top five teams and our top shelf power rankings for this week. Yes. All right. Here we go. Time now to talk about the best game from this past week that we watched. So this is always fun to kind of look back on it. And, John, please go first because this was this was really fun. Um, I, I always love ghosting you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do that to you, man, because um, I, I don't always get the same games that you'd get. Yeah. Um, as we found out the last time. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> right? Um, so if I don't get that particular game or I can't watch it, I have you running. Yep. Okay? So I had you running for this game because I wanted to hear about how your call for this game was. Yeah, then this was a great one out west between the L.A. Kings and the Calgary Flames last night, last day of March. 3-2 shootout win for L.A., and this one came right down to the wire. It was a very, very tight game, very back-and-forth game, and the goaltending was outstanding. Uh, this was 0-0 at the end of the first period, thanks to the goaltending. Uh, L.A. struck first. They scored the first goal early on in the second, but then uh, Calgary, and then it stayed 1-0 the rest of the second period. Yeah. And Calgary was able to come back and tie it early in the third, and it was tied 1-1. Then the Flames took a lead. They went up 2-1, but then with like four minutes left, L.A. scored to tie it back up at two. It ends up going to overtime. Crazy back-and-forth overtime, but nobody actually scores. Goes to a shootout, and then finally the Kings are able to win it in the shootout. But Cal Peterson in particular for L.A. in goal played absolutely phenomenal last night. And this was a huge win for the Kings. I agree. Because Edmonton is right on their tail. Edmonton was one point behind them with a game in hand going into last night's game. L.A. really needed to try and stretch that lead out a little bit, and they got it back to a three-point lead over the Oilers for second place. So awesome. Huge win for the Kings. Great goaltending. Awesome back-and-forth game. And that was the best game that I watched this week. There you go, man. Awesome sauce. There was a, and you know, Calgary is one of the top teams out West. Yeah. So for LA to beat Calgary like that in Calgary. Proving that LA is not a joke. Like they're there for a reason. They're for real. They are for real, folks. That's for sure. They were another surprise team this year. The other thing is LA is playing without four of their top six defensemen. Two-thirds of their usual decor is out. Sean wow. Walker, Matt Roy, Drew Doughty, and Mikey Anderson all out with injuries. Wow. And th- I mean, they've got kids playing up there. Oh you know, gosh. Jordan Spence has come up. Sean Dursey's come up. Oh, wow. Like, and they're still winning these big games in L.A. This team is not a joke. They are there you, for a reason. You got it. And we thought, 
that it was either going to be L.A. or Anaheim or San Jose was going to be one of the, su- the surprise California teams. I thought it was going to be L.A. Okay, I, I personally thought it was going to be Anaheim because I thought with the how they were playing at the beginning of the year and with the young talent that they have coming up, yeah. I thought it was going to be Anaheim. But, yeah, I'm happily wrong that it's L.A. Yeah. Go L.A., right? You know? So... Aside from the two games that I mentioned from last week, the Pittsburgh New York Rangers series, because they did like a home at home with a yep. game in between. And they play again this coming week, too, I think, for the last time this year until yeah. the playoffs, but they're going to play in the first round, it looks uh-huh. like. Uh so. huh. And those were some good games, but I'm going to tell you something. How about this matchup, Carolina versus Tampa Bay? This was one of those flip the switch games for, for Tampa because they were down early. Okay. This is why I picked this game yep. because I remember earlier when we were talking about our top shelf power rankings and I yep. said I've watched Tampa Bay play and then I've watched them flick the switch on during games. Yep. This was one of those games Absolutely. where they flipped the switch and said, eh, we're not losing this game. Yep. Okay. Now, back and forth, great goaltending, great plays. I mean, a lot of smashing, a lot of hitting, but Tampa Bay took this overtime uh, in in the overtime. Yep. Um, But this game is definitely one of those statement games, I think, for Tampa Bay. Mm -hmm. Because playing against Carolina, who is obviously ahead of them, you know, in the standings, and probably a team that they're going to be potentially facing in the first round, maybe? Do you think maybe? They'd have to drop to a wild card spot for that to happen. But Okay, all right. Well, either That's way... not they impossible. Might, yeah, I mean, it, it could happen. Yep. But at some way, shape, and form, there's going to be some kind of playoff run here where these two might run into each other. It certainly could be a conference final. If okay. Tampa is able to go that far and Carolina is able to go that far. Right. So could be, but, you know, either way you slice it, these two teams are fighting for, you know, what they're fighting for to try yep. to get to where they're trying to get to. And Tampa Bay, I think, was a, a, a statement game on this one by beating yes. Carolina in overtime um, in Tampa Bay. Yep. So that was my best game of last week. All right, there we go. It's time now to talk about some individual players, our three stars of the week for this past week of action. And, uh, well, we have the same players on the list, a little bit different of an order, but, boy, were there some quality performances this week in the NHL. Oh, my gosh. Sure. You know, John, when I when I looked at the list of guys and I started going through them, you know what I mean, and I'm like, because I try to pick the guys that have uh, a high plus minus. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I like to see the points, but yeah, if you're scoring points and you're a minus five, uh, you're on the <laughs> ice for way too many goals again. Right. Okay. So exactly. So <clears throat> Leon Dry Saddle. <clears throat> I I wasn't gonna say anything. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything. But... I think the I think the Calgary Edmonton game single handedly destroyed the plus minuses of a bunch of Edmonton players. I think so too. Yeah, <laughs> that single-handedly destroyed the plus minuses for a what lot of was those it? Edmonton nine guys. To... It ended nine to five, but because so many of uh, Edmonton's goals were on the power play, yeah, you know, you don't get the plus on the power play, uh, and Calgary destroyed them even strength. <laughs> so, I like guess McDavid it. and Drysdale, those guys were all like minus four, minus five in that game. <laughs> that hurts. But uh, we're going to talk about some of that really good stuff coming up here with our three stars of the week. Yeah. And so what do you think, John? Do you want to go first? Yeah, I can kick us off. Yeah, here. kick us off. Number three star, Frederick Anderson of the Carolina Hurricanes. Goaltender 2-0-0 in the two games that he played this week. Ridiculous 983 save percentage, a 0.50 goals against average, one shutout, and he stopped 57 out of 58 shots against. So one game he got the shutout, the other game he gave up only one goal. 
Only played a couple games. Uh, usually I try and go for goalies that have played like three or four. But Anderson, there's no way you're keeping him off the list this week. Um, insanely good numbers for him and two big wins for the Hurricanes. Exactly. So there you go, man. I have Johnny Goudreau yep. as my number three uh, for the Calgary Flames. And I foreshadowed him earlier when we were talking about some other things here. Um, but he's got 91 points on the season, and 31 of them are goals. Okay, so, all right. But in uh, the last four games, he has two goals, seven assists for nine points. He's a plus five. He has one game winner, mm -hmm. seven even strength points. That's getting it done. Oh, yeah. Okay. Two power play points, but I like to see those even strength points. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I like to see. He also has a game winner too. So, but nine points in four games. Yeah, he's just. I think he's going to reach a hundred points this year. Absolutely. I mean, as long as he plays and is healthy for the rest yeah. of the year, he will without a doubt hit a hundred points. I also think that this is a contract year for him too. Yes, it is. I don't think he's going to leave Calgary. Ooh. I think he's going to re-sign with Calgary because of what they're doing this year and potentially next year. I think he stays. Definitely going to be one of the big off-season stories for sure yeah. is what happens yeah, yeah. with Johnny Goodrow. Because if he hits free agency, he's going to be one of the biggest names out there. And I think he stays. I think he stays. Okay. Oh, well. So, who do you have at number two? Well, Johnny Goodrow, the man we were just <laughs> we talking know. about. Four <laughs> games played. He has 91 points this season. Nine of them came this past week. Uh, <laughs> nine points in four games, plus five, a game winner. You know, everything you said, seven even strength points. Lit it up. I think he had five or five assists or six assists in the game against Edmonton. Uh, yeah. I don't remember off the top of my head. That was like yeah. a week ago now, but ridiculous <laughs> game for him against the Oilers uh, la yeah. uh, last weekend. And just having a career year, he's going to hit a hundred points for the first time in his career. As long as he stays healthy this year. And um, obviously with it being a contract year, he's going to get a big, big contract in the off season as well. So Johnny Goodrell lighting it up right now. No doubt about it. I mean, I would love to see his wish come true and him be able to play for his hometown team, but I just don't think that's going to be in the cards. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just think he's going to stay in Calgary, but that's just my opinion. All right, so your number two is Johnny Goudreau. My number two is a guy from another Canadian team, and that's Mitch Marner yes. for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Four games played. He has one goal. <laughs> Eh, just one goal. Eh, no big deal. Nine assists. Yep. <laughs> For ten points, he's a plus two, four even strength points, and six power play points. Lighting Holy it up on the power play. Moly. Great passer of the puck. He loves to pass the puck. That's what he does. He's a setup man. He is, and he just plays it to a T. He's got good amount of points he's one of the reasons why toronto is playing so well this year yep. um i really like toronto's team this year more so than the last two years i agree okay their goaltending has gotten better their defense has gotten better their depth has gotten better mitch marner's playing better um, um austin matthews is playing you know his his 200 foot game he's yep. scoring 50 goals i mean come on that's who my number two is mitch marner yeah, I'm glad you brought him up because he's my number one. <laughs> yeah, there you, know, you go. 10 points in four games, plus two, lighting it up on the power play. Nine of those 10 points assists. Um, just a great passer of the puck, a great setup man. Um, you know, play playing very, very well for the Leafs. This is a very, very good uh, Toronto Maple Leafs team. I, I mean, this is this is a team that's got a shot and. I feel I say this every time Toronto gets brought up, but they got to do this in the playoffs. You know, we know they can do it in the regular season. They've done it multiple years in the regular exactly. season. We can know that they're a very it. good hockey team. Yeah. Do it in the playoffs. Can, yeah. can Marner put up 10 points in a playoff series? That's what I want to see. He can, yeah. he can do it in four games in the regular season. 
Can he do it in a playoff series? Can Matthews have, you know, five goals in six games in a playoff series and win the series? Like, those are the things that I want to see from the Toronto Maple Leafs this year. And exactly. um, they certainly have the talent to do it because there's there's no questioning the talent on this team. And they've been fleeting with the top five, the top shelf power rankings as well. They're usually but, on it, but they got you, knocked off this week well, by point zero two <laughs> of a percentage point. Out okay. of Tampa Bay Lightning. So, like I said, you know, Toronto is usually on the list, you know, in the top five power rankings the only reason toronto got knocked off is because tampa's played one less game and they have a one One more difference yeah (laughs) oh boy i'll tell you what so that's a another uh great uh three star there so my number one star is a player that you've already talked about and that's frederick anderson man carolina look excuse me anytime you get anything over 0.9 something something save percentage i'm going to be paying attention and then when you have a 0. 0.50 goals against that is very good <laughs> now you've really gone above and beyond mm-hmm. and 57 to 58 shots stopped uh, one shutout two zero and zero, but a 0. 0.983 save percentage i don't care if it's only two games man that's just being the wall back there yeah. Okay, and not letting anything through. No yep. wonder Carolina is one of the best defensive teams. Yeah. Look okay, they got back here stopping the puck. Gosh, he doesn't let anything through. <laughs> He's definitely looking like he'll be one of the three Vesna finalists this year for sure. We'll have to put him in that conversation along with a certain other goaltender from Calgary. Markstrom. Markstrom. Yeah. Oh, man. You got, I mean, what does he have now? Nine shutouts. He's up to nine shutouts. Nine yeah. shutouts. Yeah, dude, man, that dude's that dude really is the wall. <laughs> nine shutouts. But there you have it, man. Frederick Anderson, uh, Mitch Marner, and Johnny Goudreau are my uh, three stars. And John's is Mitch Marner, Johnny Goudreau, and Frederick Anderson. Same players, just in a little different bit different order. order. All right, time for hottest and coldest teams now, where we look at the teams that are playing really well and the teams that are not, and. Uh, We've always like to start with the positive, so we'll go with the hot teams first. Steel, you can take the reins on this one. Go first. Three hottest teams in the NHL right now. So, John does his uh, a little differently than I do mine. I take mine based off of the number of games won in a row. Mm-hmm. John goes by the last 10 games. Okay, Um, I I agree that a lot of times uh, we have uh, similar teams on the list for the most part, but -hmm. sometimes not always. This week is uh, no different. There's going to be a couple of different teams on here. My number three hottest team with three wins in a row is your aforementioned Tampa Bay Lightning. Yes. Um, winning three games in a row, uh, one of them being against Carolina in overtime. So, uh, yeah. Tampa Bay back to their winning ways after taking a week off, maybe, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, they lost a couple of games there in a row there and weren't playing real well. And so they took a week off and now they're back. So with three wins in a row. Mm-hmm. Toronto, aforementioned before Toronto, who is usually on the list but got knocked off this past week. But Toronto with three wins in a row. Toronto just playing well. Austin Matthews getting to 50 goals. Mitch Marner lighting it up. Okay. I mean, this team is doing very well. Uh, I'm excited to see what they can do in the playoffs. I think this team is better than the team the last two years, and I think they will be able to make it past the first round. Ooh. Depending on who they play. <laughs> No, they match I mean, up they match uh, up with Tampa round one, which is how it's looking right now. That would be that'll be a phenomenal series. Mm-hmm. I think that'll be a really good I think that's a good matchup. Mm-hmm. But I would take Toronto in that matchup, I think. Wow. Yeah, I look I, I have to give goaltending to Tampa Bay, mm-hmm. but I I think with what Toronto has done this this past year i i think tampa bay is kind of going to take the back seat this year okay that'll yeah. be something if it happens it yeah if it happens imagine if how crazy it happens. 
<laughs> how crazy it's going to get if Toronto finally wins in the playoffs. So there, and that would mean that they would have to be beating a team like Tampa Bay. Yep. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> Call me crazy. Uh, my number one hottest team is of course the number four team in the league. And that's the New York Rangers with four wins in a row. Yep. And not only were they four wins in a row, but two of those wins came against the Penguins. Yep. So, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, you're my number one hottest team. You win four games in a row and two of them against the Penguins. All right. <laughs> I'll take that all day long. And New York has been playing outstanding. They they play a really good game. Shesterkin is probably up for the Hart Trophy this year for the MVP. So, that's my hottest teams. New York number one, Toronto number two, Tampa Bay number three. All right, my number three team is the Colorado Avalanche, 7-2-1 and one in their last 10. They've won two straight uh, after dropping one before that. And 7 out of 10 for the Avalanche, they just continue rolling this year like they have all season long. Uh, the, number two, Boston Bruins, 8-2-0 yeah. oh in their last 10 games. One of two teams that are 8-2-0 and oh in their last 10 games. Obviously but Boston has been a, playing really well, though, not just in their last 10. Yeah, just really from January on, Boston's right. been very, very good. Uh, they took the bad loss on Tuesday against the Maple Leafs. That, that, was a, that was a frustrating one, but they bounced back with a just throttling of the New <laughs> Jersey Devils last night. <laughs> Perfect um, game to play after losing to Toronto. <laughs> yeah, they throttled the Devils 8-1, to one, and they still won 8 out of their last 10 games. So they're they're playing great hockey right now, and continuing to stay hot number one same as steel the new york rangers who are the other team that's eight two and oh in their last 10 they've won four in a row which is the leading active win streak in the nhl right now obviously two of those wins came against pittsburgh who's their likely first round playoff opponent and the rangers are playing very very good hockey right now continuing to prove that they are for real and they're an excellent team and going to be uh, a tough out in the playoffs, I believe. I agree. I agree 100%. Um, wouldn't, I, I would really not want to be facing them, to be honest with you. I don't want to face anybody in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, it's going to be tough. <laughs> Nobody <sighs> makes me go, oh, yay, I have the first round matchup against <laughs> this team. Like, every single matchup is going to be a tough one for everybody. Yeah, pretty much. All the way around. I mean, without a doubt, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, that's just how it's shaping up this for this for this playoffs. I mean, I, and I, I can't wait. Oh, my gosh, I can't wait. Oh, it's going to be so good. We all thought the playoffs were good last year. Ha! You ain't seen nothing yet. Absolutely not. I can't wait for this year's to start. Is it playoff time yet? A Are month. playoff hockey yet? A month. We'll be there. All right, I can wait a month. Until then, we've got some really great games that we get to watch anyway. So. Yeah, that's true. All right, we're good. All right, coldest teams. The negative side. The other side, yeah. Uh, oh, you want to go on this one first, John? Sure. Uh, oh. Number three, the Vancouver Canucks. And this is coming at the worst possible time I'll for say. the Vancouver Canucks, who had kind of pulled themselves back into that playoff race. They were only, I think, two or three points out of a playoff spot at one yeah. point. Yeah. They are just 3 5 and 2 in their last 10 games. They've lost two in a row in regulation to the St. Louis Blues. Didn't get a single point out of that Ouch. Set. Ouch. And all of a sudden Vancouver finds themselves in a lot of trouble now. They've they've kind of dropped out of the picture here a little bit. Um looking at the West Wild Card, they have fallen behind Winnipeg, behind Vegas, behind Dallas. Um Ooh. They're at 73 Ooh. points. The cut line right now is 79, which is the Dallas Stars. Um, yikes. Yeah, yeah that's... Six, points, six <laughs> points back now for Vancouver. They're in some trouble. With that Vancouver. qualifies as yikes. <laughs> they're in some trouble now with this, uh, with this little stretch say, here. So they're the third smokes. coldest team. Number two is the Philadelphia Flyers. They also have three wins out of their last ten games, three, six, and one. And they've lost three in a row in regulation as Philly's nightmare season part two continues. Uh, last year was nightmare season part one. I guess they decided the sequel was going to come out very quickly after. And uh, 
this year has not been good for Philadelphia either, and I am, expect some major changes at the end of the season. Part three, coming to a hockey team near you. <laughs> uh, number one, though, the Anaheim Ducks. And this was an easy one for me because they have zero wins in their last 10 games. They've, they've lost 11 in a row now. Now, some of those were in overtime, and the NHL counts overtime losses and regulation losses differently because you do get a point for the OT loss. But they are 0-7-3. and in their last 10 games. They lost last night in overtime to the Dallas Stars. And, um, yeah, as good as they were for the first half of the year and a real big surprise around the league, the Anaheim Ducks have not been able to continue that for a full season, and they have completely fallen off the map here. Completely fallen off the map. Um, Wow. Those are some pretty cold teams you got there, John. Yes. Vancouver, Philly, Anaheim, three coldest teams right now in the NHL. All right. Well... My list isn't going to be that much more exciting. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I have uh, two of the same teams. One's different and a little bit of a different order. Like I said, I do mine slightly different than John does, although I could give an honorable mention to Anaheim, but they did have an overtime, so I can't count them. (laughs) My number three coldest team is Columbus Blue Jackets. They've lost the last two games in a row. Mm -hmm. Um, They just can't quite make up their mind where they want to be yet yeah they're there's they seem like they want to try to fight and then then very then, up and down yeah so not quite sure where they're going to end up they're they're probably not going to make it this year i don't think they are. oh they're definitely not making the playoffs yeah. no. vancouver i agree number two coldest team yeah you can't this is now is not the time to be losing those games and unfortunately you're going to be in a hole too deep i don't think you're going to be able to climb out of mm-hmm. okay Number one coldest team, Philadelphia Flyers. They've lost three in a row. Yep. Are we on the verge of another 10-game losing streak? Can we be the first team that has three in one season? Yikes. God, that'd be so brutal. Like, it's not even 10 games. Like, the last one was 12. Yeah. And the one before that, I think, was 14. Oh, boy. Right? <laughs> there isn't enough change that could happen in Philadelphia in the next season or two like we're going to see part four before we see anything happen with this team it it has look I've studied this team intently and there's, there's nothing good coming out of anything the last two years Nothing good. And there's nothing good coming out of anything in the next two. They traded away Giroux. They barely got anything back for him. They don't have anything that's even remotely in the pipelines that's going to be replaceable Mm -hmm. or comparable to replace Giroux, right? Yep. So next year you got Couturier coming back maybe, hopefully, better, stronger, faster. You got Scott Lawton coming back maybe, um, and hopefully Ellis comes back. But that's it. You know, you got a couple of young players, and then that's it. Most of your, most of your young talent you've used incorrectly or traded away. Mm-hmm. You don't have a lot of draft picks stockpiled, so you're going to be picking guys or picking a lot of players. Yep. You you need draft picks, and and let's face it, um, this year they're going to have a probably a top four draft pick, and hopefully they don't bungle this one. <laughs> right. No Nolan okay. Patrick repeat. You know, right? Because that's what our last number one draft pick was, was Nolan Patrick. Mm-hmm. And where is he? Barely playing games for LA or for Vegas right now. Yeah, injured you know, again. Injured again. You know what I mean? So not you're looking at coaching change. You're looking at front office change. Well, you're looking at uh, d- player development change. You're looking at scouting change. I mean, they don't even have the scouting department at the minor league games. <laughs> That makes zero sense. Um, what? Wh- where are you? Yeah, that makes no sense whatsoever. How is how is it that the scouting department is not scouting at the games to be scouting? I don't know. Anyway, There's, one thing I have to say about Philadelphia is there is no team in the NHL that needs a new general manager more than the Philadelphia Flyers. 
And I don't think that Danny Briere is going to be the answer. Because they're grooming him and they're setting him up to be the one. Right? Because he's already, right now, he's the s- s- special assistant. Special assistant, yeah. <laughs> to the general manager. Uh, Ch- Chuck Fletcher is not a good NHL GM. And he's what's going to happen, here's what's going to happen. Mark my words. They're going to give Chuck Fletcher the presidency of hockey operations. And they're going to promote Danny Breer as general manager. Right? That's what's going to happen. Well, there's going to be nothing but sequels to Nightmare Season Philadelphia Flyers until Chuck Fletcher is gone from that organization. So, like I said, (laughs) we're going to see multiple sequels to this. We ain't done yet. Oh, boy. So, um, go Colorado, go Florida, (laughs) go Seattle. Gosh, even (laughs) Seattle's playing better than Philadelphia right now. (laughs) Woo! Can we have Hackstall back? Did I just say that? Oh, I don't know if you want that. But <laughs> Seattle has won at least four games, though. They've won four of their last ten. <laughs> so, there you have it. All right. Now the fun part. Yes. Oh, man. I'll tell you what. Listen, if you were a betting person, you should have been John last week. Or well, you could even have been me. You could have even been me. I, I, didn't, I didn't do too bad either, but... Game picks for Saturday, not quite the full slate of games for this coming Saturday, the 2nd of April, but there's quite a number of games. And what we like to do is have a little bit of fun, and we just like to pick and see who is going to win for the Saturday games. Yep. We don't. There's no rhyme or reason to this. This is just for fun. So just for fun, John was 11-1 last week. Yeah, I wish that wasn't just for fun. Oh, boy. Or that was for real. <laughs> yeah, 11 and 1. Don't yeah. see that very often. That was the second best week of picks that we've had this year. Mm-hmm. The first was me with 12 and 1. Yep. And then, John, you just did 11 and 1. Yep. Right? So there you go, buddy. You're on the list. You're at 122 and 73 for the year. Okay. Okay? So that's really pretty good. I went ten and two this past week, so I'm at one twenty three and seventy four. Okay, yep. so we are actually doing really well this year, Ooh, and we're right, actually yeah. neck and neck this year. Where last year, dude, you were just <laughs> far and away better than where I even remote. I didn't even finish at five hundred last year. So yeah, I, I that's not the case this year, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> I got your number, man. I'm coming <laughs> for you. So here we go. We're going to pick some games that are lined up for Saturday night or Saturday afternoon, whichever the case may be. And we like to pick who's going to win, and we're going to start right off with Florida at New Jersey Devils. Uh, Florida, significantly better team. (laughs) Do we even need to talk about this? No. (laughs) New Jersey, and we thought they'd be a little better this year, but... Not so much. Not really, no. No, not so much. They still need a little bit more work. All right. This is a a game that I have circled. Yep. (laughs) Pittsburgh versus Colorado. I'm going to take Colorado Colorado. because they're at home. And Colorado's been almost unbeatable on home ice this year. So I'm going to go Colorado. I almost thought... About considering hmm. Pittsburgh. I almost thought about considering Pittsburgh. And then you saw the Avalanche home record? And then went, eh, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> And said, yeah, Colorado for that one. <laughs> yeah. Good thought gone. <laughs> All right. LA Kings versus Winnipeg. In Winnipeg. I'm going to take the Kings here. Have to. Kings, you have to. Kings need this win badly. Yeah. Winnipeg does too. They're trying to stay into some sort of playoff contention. But L.A. needs this win with the Oilers right on their heels. And mm-hmm. I was impressed with the Kings' ability to beat yeah, the too. Flames. Yeah, if they too. can beat the Flames, they certainly can beat the Jets. I agree. 100%. 100% all day long. That game, I think, was a really good game against them. Mm-hmm. That L.A. was able to win. Yeah. Okay. Time. And I think that says a lot about where L.A. is. Yep. Okay. And they're going to be a tough team to face. 
um, come playoff time for sure. Yep. Um, and they need this win as well, too. So I'm going with L.A. on this one, too. All right, here we go. Columbus Blue Jackets at Boston. Bruins got to take care of business here. Yeah, that's that's easy. That's easy peasy. I mean, it's easy to pick that Boston should be winning this game. Yeah. But Columbus has just been so up and down this yeah. year that I can't even put a bead on them. You yeah. know what I mean? So I, I have to go with Boston. So. All right, Montreal versus Tampa Bay, a rematch of the finals from last year. Yeah, give me the Tampa Bay Lightning, just like the finals last year. <laughs> yeah, this isn't even, yeah. Look, I'm going to say this, all right? The last couple of games that Montreal has played, um, a la via Carolina, a la ver- versus um, uh, Carolina, and then um, Florida. Yep. Okay. And they played both of those games very well. Yep. They took Florida. They they were leading Florida into the second period, four to two or something like mm-hmm. that, right? And the same thing against Carolina. They've had some really tough games, and Tampa Bay is not any and another easier. You know, isn't any easier? Yeah. Right. So they've had some really tough games, and they've played, and they've scored. They just haven't won. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I have to take Tampa Bay on this. Although I think this is going to be a tough game. Yep. For Tampa Bay. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, Toronto. <laughs> yeah. That's easy. Toronto. Yep. No Toronto. way. No I, way I, they lose to Philadelphia. That would I, be a bad yeah. loss. I don't even need to tell you who they're playing against. <laughs> Toronto versus Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Anyway. All right. Uh, Minnesota versus Carolina. I'm going to take Carolina because they're at home again. I think, yep. you know, the home ice plays a role there. A lot of these good teams are really, really good at home. So that's a tough game. Minnesota's playing well, but I think Carolina at home. And Minnesota really needs this game, but I don't think it's going to happen against Carolina at home. Yeah. Yeah, it would be a different story if it was playing in Minnesota. I might consider thinking about taking Minnesota (laughs) if they were playing at home. Uh, But that's not the case. So, all right, St. Louis versus Calgary. So St. Louis is going to be on the second game of a back-to-back here. So yeah. I'm going to take Calgary. Calgary, yeah. Mm-hmm. I also don't see the Flames losing twice in a row on home ice. Like, they just lost to the Kings. I don't see them losing twice. So I'm going to take the Flames in that one. Yeah. Look, I think St. Louis has played better. but I And I like what they some of the things they did at the trade deadline. But I just don't. I just don't see St. Louis this year. Mm-hmm. I just, I just, I'm not seeing him. I, I see Calgary, but I don't see St. Louis. All right, last game: Dallas versus San Jose Sharks. Dallas. I mean, da- Dallas needs these wins. I yeah. mean, the, these are the games that are going to get them into the playoffs. San Jose is yeah. not a very good team. True. Dallas needs to win. Like they need to go in there and win. They just beat Anaheim twice. They got to continue that against the Sharks. And the Sharks just won. Um, they're, well, they won their game on Saturday, but the Sharks have won a couple of games here and there, and they're not playing that terribly bad, but Dallas needs this one. Yeah. And I think they're the better team all day. So i got to go with Dallas on this. Yes. So there you go. All right, there's our picks for Saturday. Here we have it. All right, man. Here we go now. Game of the week. Yes. Now, this is a game that John and I feel that you should probably be parking your tuchus in front of the TV to watch. Yep. Or at least tuning in to John on the YouTube channel so you can hear him call the game. Okay. So, John, who is your game of the week for this week? I will say there are multiple games this week that are game of the week level. There are some incredibly good matchups throughout the week this week. This was tough. Just picking one. I went with the Toronto Maple Leafs against the Tampa Bay Lightning on Monday night, April 4th. This could be a first-round preview. With the standings Mm. the way that they are right now, this would be your 2-3 matchup in the Atlantic Division. Toronto beat Florida, beat Boston, took destroyed Winnipeg, took care of business there. Now they have to try to go into Tampa Bay and face a team that is the defending champion and they might be playing in the first round of the playoffs. This is going to be another huge test here for the Toronto Maple Leafs to see just how for real they are. They mm-hmm. beat Florida. They passed that test. They 
beat Boston. They passed mm -hmm. that test. This is another huge test for Toronto and a huge test for Tampa Bay as well because I Toronto agree. is actually one point ahead of them in the standings. So this is just a monster game. The Leafs are playing great right now. The Lightning are on a three-game winning streak right now. Very well could be a first-round playoff matchup. Monster game for both sides. This is going to be incredible on Monday night. Do you know, two games, two days before that, there's another incredibly monster game. Um, and I'm talking about the Pittsburgh Penguins versus Colorado Avalanche. Yep. Holy smokes. This is the Saturday game. I mean, Colorado, one of the best teams in the league. Yep. This is a huge test for Pittsburgh. If Pittsburgh can go into Colorado and beat this team, then you have to consider Pittsburgh to be for real. Mm -hmm. Not that they're not. You know, I mean, we all know that they're going to make the playoffs. Yeah. But how far are they going to go in the playoffs? What kind of a team are they going to be in the playoffs? Yep. I think we are going to find out what kind of team we're going to see in this game right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Honestly, I... I'm looking for Colorado on this all day long. But I think this is going to be a tough, good game. I think this is going to be one of those games where you should probably be parking your tuchus <laughs> and breaking out the popcorn and be watching this game on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one for sure. No doubt about that. I mean, huge my matchup. gosh, huge. The, the, the Toronto-Tampa Bay game has major implications yep. for playoffs, right? And the Pittsburgh-Colorado game just has just matchup, you know what I mean? Yep. Just because it's a mo monster game because Colorado, one of the best teams out west, Pittsburgh, one of the better teams out east, you know what I mean? Uh, this could potentially, potentially yep. be a matchup. You know, I mean, if you make it to the dance, you get a shot. Yep. Right? So Pittsburgh is going to make it to the dance. They're going to get a shot. Yep. All right, my man. That's our games of the week. So we got a game on Monday and a game on Saturday. Yes. It's going to be a busy – man, look, all the games up until the playoffs are all going to be pretty much – Good, tough games to watch. The ones that have playoff implications are all going to be very, very important. I agree. I agree 100%. And there's going to be a lot of them uh, because now you're getting the, those last couple of games where you need to make sure that you've finished off your season series with the teams from your division. Yep. So we're, I think we're going to see a lot of the divisional games in the last 14 games here of the season, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. So. All right. Prospect watch time, another one of our favorite segments as oh, we look man. at the future and look at some young players that uh, that are you know coming up, maybe not quite there yet at the NHL level, but hopefully going to be soon. And Steele, if you want to kick us off here, you've got a really cool one this week. Oh my, oh my, oh my, Duquesne Fighting Saints, also the U.S. Hockey League, Stefan Holiday. 19 year old, six foot four, 209 pounds. Let me tell you something, folks. This kid has that Ovechkin cannon from the top of the circle. I'm not kidding. I, I've seen it, mm -hmm. I've watched it. Uh, this kid is good. Um, I get to interview him on Sunday. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, man. Lance uh, from the Hockey Writers, Inc. and I are going to get to interview Stefan Holiday from the Duquesne Fighting Saints. He's also part of the United States Hockey League. Um, he has, wait for it, 100 points this season. Yes, 100 points this season for the United States Hockey League and the Duquesne Fighting Saints. In 51 games played, he has... 30 goals and 47 assists for 77 points for the Duquesne Fighting Saints. Man. And he's projected at maybe a sixth-round draft pick because mm -hmm. he's 19. Yep. He's older. He's older. But, but he's, he's also huge. Six foot four, 209 pounds. He already has the body. Yep. He's already a leader on the team. Um, he's their leading scorer, of course. And then he's also committed to going to Ohio State next year. Yeah, so we're going to so, get to see him play some college hockey. 
some Big Ten teams and everything like that. And, man, I'll tell you what. Some team should be doing their due diligence on this young man because at 19, at six foot four, 209, and leading the league in scoring, uh, y'all need to sign this kid. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I feel like he's got the NHL body, and it's yeah. just about putting it all together. He's having a great, great year. Uh, putting up some big time points, some big time goals, and it's going to be. He's, yeah, he's got the. Going to be interesting to see where he goes in the yeah. uh, in the draft this year for sure. I hope some team picks him. He's got the moves. The only thing that I would say, uh, you know, he's young, but his skating, he could mm-hmm. probably be better at skating. Yep. Do you know what I mean? He he could probably be a little bit better at the 200 foot game. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's still pretty responsible. He's a plus player. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So he's he's still playing pretty responsible, and you can tell. I mean, he's he's far and away playing above where he should be playing. Mm-hmm. Okay. He he needs to be in the next. He needs to be in the next level. Yeah. Okay. okay? Cool. That that's kind of where I'm getting at here. He yep. needs to be in the next level. All right, so, well, he's going to get a chance to play some D1 college hockey at Ohio State. And for sure. <laughs> that is going to be Welcome to the level. next level. <laughs> yes. Who do you got, John? Who do you got? Simon Holmstrom, 20-year-old Ooh. winger for, for the uh, part of the New York Islanders organization. 6'1", 194 pounds, drafted in the first round, 23rd overall back in 2019. Wow. Yeah. By the Islanders, and he's having a pretty strong year this year in the AHL down in Bridgeport. Yep. 58 games played, 9 goals, 25 assists for 34 points and a plus 1 rating. Wow. And boy, do the Islanders need some young guys to kind of get infused into that lineup because they are one of Old. the oldest teams in the <laughs> NHL. You've got a lot of veterans, a lot of guys 30-plus that they're relying on. They need some more of these young guys to be able to make an impact, and Holmstrom was a first rounder for them a few years ago, back in 2019. So yeah, um, this is a guy that going to be looking at him to you know get some NHL games under his belt probably next season, hopefully, yeah. mm-hmm. and, and start to try and make that push towards becoming an NHL player. But very interesting guy to watch and an important one for the Islanders because if they missed on this pick, they really don't have a lot coming up, and they're already an older team, so. You know, they need Holmstrom to kind of come through. It seems like he's getting it. Yeah, 34 he, points in the AHL is certainly a, a good season. And a plus one, and for this is his first time playing in the AHL. You know what I mean? So um, he he does. He's he's really good player. I mean, I've watched some of uh, I watched some of his highlights. I mean, he's a pretty good player. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And, and and I think he's starting to put it together. Yep. Do you know what I mean? And see, when you can develop players. Yep. You can take a kid like this who is a later first round or a middle first rounder player who's six foot one, 194 pounds, and he can be an NHLer. Mm-hmm. You know, if he's coached, if he's put in the right situation, if he's, you know, set up for success. Yep. You know, he can be an NHLer. He can be one of those guys that can, that can contribute yep. on a regular basis. You know what I mean? So he might not be, you know, the guy you're going to hang the banner on the side of the building with. <laughs> but, you know, hey. He can be NHLer a contributor. Is still an NHL. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So that is going to do it here for Prospect Watch and for episode 61. It's again, it's wow. A- it's the Off the Wall Hockey Show, a hockey show for hockey fans, part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, and episode 61 now in the book. Steel, as always, it was awesome to talk some hockey with you. Thanks for coming on, and uh, we'll see what next week brings us as we get more NHL action in closer to the playoffs. I mean, I can't wait. We've we've already watched another great week of hockey we've got another great week coming up um man it's just gonna start getting that much more exciting as the playoffs get closer and closer and i can't wait for second season i don't know about you i'm ready to go i'm ready to go um don't forget, folks, check out the NCAA semifinals um, this weekend in Boston uh, where we're going to see uh, the semifinal rounds, and then um, next weekend we'll see the final round. So don't forget to check them out this weekend in Boston. Yeah, absolutely. Those are going to be a lot of fun as well. So you got college hockey at its pinnacle. 
You've also got uh, NHL action winding down as uh, we get closer and closer to playoff action. Thank you guys all so, so much for watching. Great to have you here. And uh, obviously this show would not be happening without you. So really, really appreciate all the support. Don't forget to check out www.steelflyers.com to check out all the work from everybody who's a part of the Steel Flyers network. We got Perlo, Joe, Peyton, uh, Hockey Writer Zinc, Steel, me, obviously. So some great stuff to check out there at steelflyers.com. Thank you guys all so much again. Have a great weekend. Hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll talk to you soon.